I wanted to do this video to basically state my opinion on what's coming in the next generation of gaming. And this is the Wii U, the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the future of PC gaming and basically what people are arguing over these various consoles. And a lot of people aren't really discussing necessarily, well, what's the PC doing in response to these consoles? And so I'm looking at all this information and I had the same knee-jerk reaction everyone else did when the Xbox stated their, you know, DRM policies. And I, I, I went, what the hell is this crap, all right? You're basically making this more restrictive than the PC is. That's bad. I mean, you guys, you have to learn your lessons from, uh, what was it, SimCity and Diablo 3 and things of that nature, where if you're constantly requiring you to be online to play a single-player game, that's bad. That pisses people off, royally. And then there was the whole Xbox, oh, you can't, you know, let your friends use your, your used games or let them borrow your games. No, bad. You can even do that on a PC game. You go, hey, here's the CD, here's the code, just don't play it at the same time I'm playing it. And I've heard a lot of people argue with me on the fact that it's like, look, you know, the PC's already doing this. We, you know, it's, why, why shouldn't the consoles be permitted to do this? I was like, well, here's the thing. The biggest reason why people get consoles is because it's simpler than the PC. It, it's easier to use. Not just that, but it's also, you know, not as convoluted when it comes to sharing your games with your friends. You can basically, I can hand, like, my copy of Halo 3 to my bud and go, Hey, this game's awesome. You should really try this. And he goes, Okay, I'll give this a try. He pops it in, uses it, and goes, Hey, this game's awesome. And he goes out and buys a copy. Now, another thing is... um someone tried to argue with me recently was the fact that used games doesn't allow the publisher to get any money. Well, the problem is it, you're, you're trying to screw the, the publisher in some cases. Like you're saying, oh, you can sell used games. And that does screw over the publisher a bit out of money. But here's the thing, though. If you don't let them use sell used games, you're screwing over the people because not a lot of people will sit there and have 60... What was it 50 60 bucks to drop on a game even if they know they don't like it or not they don't they haven't been able to try it there's no demos that's not done anymore so people are sitting there going well okay and they get 60 bucks and it turns out they don't like the game the best thing they can do with their game now is that it's a coaster that's it they can't sell it back they can't do anything with it that's the problem with that and the argument i got when i stated this was hey well, if you, you know, without the publisher, there'd be no games. And I didn't get a chance to state to this person and go, yes, but without the people buying the games, there's no publisher. The publisher makes no money, period. So you have to balance these two. You have to, you have to play this little teeter-totter crap just to make sure that, yes, the publishers are getting some money. At the same time, you're not alienating your fan base so that way you, you don't screw over your own console. And so that's what these, a lot of these consoles did um, and are trying to balance with. Xbox, I applaud them for taking back their DRM idea. But the problem is the damage has already been done. Yes, there are still some Xbox fans that are like, yes, I'm going to be buying an Xbox One. It looks awesome. And I don't blame you. You're more power to you. If you enjoy the, the system, then by all means enjoy the system and there are some ps4 people like oh you're an idiot for buying this i'm like well let the xbox people enjoy their xboxes let the ps4 people enjoy their ps4s the thing i'm trying to point out is though is the fact that ps4 supposedly from what i heard is inter inst uh, instituting something similar to what steam does which is you know you have to buy the game you have to enter the code and things of that nature which i'm all for as long as they let people share the game, that's the idea that I think honestly needs to be done. Because word of mouth sells a ridiculous amount of games. It really does. I mean, I remember, like, I would never have tried the Halo series if it wasn't for the fact that my roommate had it. And he goes, dude, you need to try this. And so I popped it into my little crappy Xbox One back, uh, you know, my original Xbox back in the day and played it and went holy shit this game is awesome i'm gonna you know buy the rest of this series because it's great and so i continued to play the series 
mind you, this is coming from someone who grew up with Atari and Nintendo and things of that nature where you had to blow in the cartridge and the whole thing. So I kind of have a, I would say, a slightly archaic sense of how games should be do done, but that's just my personal opinion. Now, the thing is, my, my word of advice to these consoles is quite simply, if you go make yourself more like a PC, that's not going to help you. All right, I understand you want to take certain things from the PC, and that I'm, I applaud you for that, some of those things. But if you make yourself too much like a PC, I think that if people have actually done a little bit of research and actually look into things and realize, hey, if I pay the little bit of extra initial cost to get a decent gaming machine compared to like one of these consoles, I'll have less restrictions, and in the end, it'll be cheaper. Because, like, some of these things are going, like, uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox are now doing the whole pay to play the games online. Which really aggravates the hell out of me. It really does. Because I understand they're trying to maintain a server and things of that nature. But, at the same time, if I buy the same game for the PC, guess what? It's free online. Like, I have Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 on my PC. And frankly, I can play them with people as much as I like. And I don't have to pay like fifteen, ten to fifteen dollars a month to play it online. It, it just that doesn't work for me. And and a lot of people, I understand some people do it for the ease and you know like oh I have an Xbox I'm gonna pay the Xbox Gold price. I kind of have to do that. No, you don't have to do that. A lot of the games that are these big multiplaying games, uh, Halo, uh, you know, Left 4 Dead, things of that nature. A lot of them have a computer port or at least a computer version of it so basically you're as long as you can get a decent machine together which if you do your proper search for parts which is like tiger dragged new egg things of that nature you can get a really good gaming machine for around the same price as a brand new gaming system that's just come out like for example the uh the Xbox One is selling for roughly $500, is what they're right now saying. For $500, you can build a comparable gaming PC. Probably with slightly better stats than the Xbox One. So, right there, that that's just a knock, notch against you know the, the consoles, currently. But at the same time, you gotta look at what the console does compared to what the PC does. Yes, the PC is more, you know complicated I mean you got like a all of these keys here could be different controls not to mention you have like a mouse and you can have like a joystick and a gamepad it could be very very confusing and very complicated for the casual gamer so what consoles offer is a way to get people into gaming with simplistic controls and it works and it's a beautiful thing uh, but at the same time you can get some of those simplistic controls for the PC that just takes some a little bit of extra work to set up so, there is some, you know, a little extra work, but in the long run, in my opinion, it makes it worth it. But, that is my opinion. But I'm looking here at the stats for the three new consoles. Alright, and literally, uh, the Wii U is shooting itself in the foot when it comes to memory. Because, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have 500 gigs of, in, like, built-in memory. That you have a, as a hard drive. The, X, uh, the Wii U has 8 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of memory. And that's it. I mean, that's that's not much. That's that's less than 10% 10, 10 of what the other two systems are offering. But at the same time, the Wii U is always... Uh, well, the Nintendo systems have always done well because they target a very specific market that the other two don't normally aim for, and that is children. Uh, Nintendo has always gone after the young younger crowds, and they've always done well with that. And that's that's what they do. And as long as they fill that niche, it works beautifully. It's a great family system. It's not necessarily great for the hardcore gamer. But then for the hardcore gamer, you have a choice between PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, unfortunately, between the both of them, you have to, you have to pay to play them online. So, which, if you had the third system, which is the, you know, the PC, you don't have to do that. So that's one, not, uh, one mark for the PC right there. Uh, but the mark against the PC is you have a higher initial system cost. A good gaming PC can cost somewhere between six to thousand dollars. 
the computer I'm currently using, I spent about $15,000 on it, but I went for some of the fancier things on my computer. But that was my choice. Uh, both of those new uh, hardcore gaming systems have 8 gigs of RAM, where the Wii U only has 2 gigabytes of RAM. So the Wii U is already right there, once again, down on the RAM. When you're looking at the hardcore gaming systems, you have the Xbox and the PlayStation, which are both sitting at 8, which is good. That is a good amount of RAM. Most games don't require much more than that, unless you're really stressing or multitasking your system. My computer, I, like I said, has 16 gigs of RAM, and there, I've heard some computers that have gone higher than that. So computers do have those higher maximums, but those higher maximums currently aren't really needed for gaming. So right then and there, I say it's kind of that's the Xbox and the PlayStation 4's advantage right there. They don't go overboard with the RAM like some gaming PCs tend to do. So you do have that as an advantage. Uh, I've already talked about the storage. Uh, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have Game DVR, all right, which is basically a video recording of your game. You can, I believe, you, that's what is what they're stating from what I've looked up is what you can do, which. Frankly, it's awesome. You can do that with a PC, but you need special programs to do that. The Wii U doesn't have that at all. No digital video recording. None. So you cannot, you know, record anything. It's a more simplistic system, but in turn, the Wii U makes up for that for being basically $300, is what they're saying. Where the other two are $400 and $500. They're $100 to $200 more expensive than the Wii U. So there is that. Um... The Xbox and the PlayStation 4 have cloud storage. So does a PC. Wii U does not. Cloud storage, I have found, is kind of be, can be very useful. Now, it, this really depends on if you travel a lot or if you're worried about your computer losing its memory or things of that nature. If you are, then cloud storage is a boon. If you're not, it's really not that big of a deal. It's not really handy, I would say. So I wouldn't necessarily call that a great or bad thing. I mean, I'm all for cloud storage, but you got to look at what you're looking to do with it. Um, internet, uh, required internet connection. Xbox recently stated that they're not doing that. They're going to do it one time when you install, uh, when you set up your Xbox. And they're removed the regional locks, which is good. Because the regional locks would have screwed over the armed forces, gentlemen. And I, I love those guys to death. They are defending our country. They're, you know... Blood, sweat, and tears, making sure that we can do whatever the heck we want over here within reason. But at the same time, that one-time connection might make it difficult for people who are in the armed forces or are in like places where the internet is touchy and it doesn't necessarily maintain that steady connection. Uh, games who have learned this lesson have been, um, you know, what is it, uh, SimCity... Uh, the recent SimCity edition, and Diablo 3. They've learned that if you constantly require an internet connection, it can and often will fail. And this will cause numerous amounts of aggravation for players. And that's why SimCity didn't do as well as the, you know Maxis thought it was going to do, or EA thought it was going to do. And then, you know, same thing with Blizzard and Diablo 3. They, they kind of flopped on it, and they weren't exactly pleased about it. Oh, excuse me. Uh... For the uh, cross-game chat, uh, this is kind of something everybody's been doing except for the Wii. Uh, with a computer, you can use like Ventrilo, uh, Mumble, uh, TeamSpeak. Pretty much any of those programs work for cross-game chat, and they're beautiful programs. I would recommend them all at some po point or another. Uh, voice commands. Currently, the PlayStation is to be announced. They haven't announced if they're going to enable voice commands. Xbox has enabled the voice commands, but unfortunately, this voice man command, um, constant voice command ability comes through the Kinect, which means the Kinect is always on. And a lot of people are like, well, they said that it's not recording all the time. There are too many backdoors into the Xbox One that someone could easily get into and look through your camera, which I know sounds paranoid. I know it sounds like a conspiracy. I sound like a conspiracy nut, but it, honestly, as a computer you know, programmer, you know, amateur p computer programmer, and the fact that I have friends who are hackers, they do. They did state that the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One do have that easy back door. You can get into it as long as it's connected to the internet, 
which can really create this uneasy feeling, and I wouldn't want it in my my house. It, uh, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, the, the live streaming. Everybody's doing live streaming except for the Wii again. Live streaming can be sometimes fun. It depends on what you're doing with it. Not necessarily a big deal. Uh, Bluetooth. The PlayStation 4 and the Wii are Bluetooth enabled, which means you can use a Bluetooth device to control the system or interact with it. So you might have a Bluetooth headset or you might have you know, a Bluetooth remote or something. I believe something along those lines will be... Um, Involved in those systems, they have confirmed that there will be a Bluetooth port there. The Xbox One does not have Bluetooth, and honestly, if any system would have had Bluetooth, I would have suggested that one. Especially when they did the release thing and they were going, "Look, you can watch TV and movies and yada yada," and they didn't focus on games. But when they were pushing all this TV and movies and saying this is a complete media system, why not include Bluetooth? That, that makes no sense. If you're going to do a complete media system, please include Bluetooth. Uh, the AV hookups are HDMI. Everybody's across the board. And the only person that is currently le uh, re region locked is, unfortunately, the Wii U is currently le region locked. And I, I've already stated my opinion on region locked. It's stupid. It shouldn't be done. It's, it's just mind-blowing. Uh, but looking at everything that has happened... Through all the releases, through E3, all that stuff, I, I staved, uh, I kept from recording this for a little while to get a general opinion and see how things calmed down. And in my opinion, uh, the Xbox One has shot itself in the foot. It, it did it early on, and it's trying to crawl out of the hole, and it's done somewhat. But in the console war, it's probably the probably going to be the bottom of the three. It's not going to be horrific, but it's pretty bad. In terms of where they are in the standing. Uh, the Wii U on your hand has really shot itself in the foot. In terms of their controller being as touchy as it is. It doesn't run right some days. It, 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 you try to touch it and make emotions and it doesn't register. Sometimes it registers too much. It's really finicky. And it, needs to, it needed to be uh, beta tested some more. Or thrown through its paces a little bit more. Just to make sure that it worked right. Uh, so there is that thing, but Nintendo will do better than Xbox, in my opinion, for the simple fact that it's aimed towards children. And Nintendo has always been kind of like the middle ground. If it has been on the low end, it's usually been on the high low end, so it's been fine. It's been a consistent system, if that makes if, if that makes any sense. Uh, I think, honestly, this generation, PlayStation 4 has won the console war in terms of just consoles. And so that, there's... It has done that. It, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to wipe the other two off the map. I'm just saying it will be probably the top dog. It's done a lot of good things. Uh, the PlayStation Plus, which is their, your basically the equivalent of Xbox Gold, uh, they give you four free games each month. And they're not crappy games. They give you like a little, uh, couple indie games and then a couple of mainstream games. And they choose which game you get each month. You don't get to choose. The, uh, but when you look at the PlayStation 4 in comparison to the PC, I think, honestly, the gaming PC will do better. It, uh, the gaming PC has been on the climb. It's been going up uh, in number of players. People have been getting more in tuned with gaming pc especially by watching uh, YouTube channels like uh, Unit Lost, um, uh, Fiery Joker, Artaka Flame... Uh, Rabbit Luigi, guys like that. They've uh, Yogg's Cast is another one. They've been really pushing these, you know, computer games and saying, "Hey, guys, look at this stuff. This stuff is really good. You, this really deserves your attention." And a lot of people who have been browsing YouTube have noticed this. They've gone, "Hey, that game looks awesome. What is it for? Oh, it's for the PC. I'm gonna go out and get myself a PC." And it worked out better for a lot of people. So there is this growing movement to get people into gaming PC. Uh, and it's not necessarily taken completely away from the console thing, but if consoles keep doing this trend where they're getting more and more PC-like, uh, PC you're going to start seeing people leaving the consoles going towards the PCs, in my opinion. it's gonna They're going to look at it and go, why should I buy your system when I can build a PC or have a PC built for the same price that does the exact same thing and my games are cheaper. It, it just it ends up being like that because, like for the PC, you have Steam, 
Uh, you have a website called GOG.com or GoodAllGames.com, which uh, basically is like Steam, except they don't have DRM on their games. and they But they're older style games. So you have that. And you have all of these services that are moving towards the PC. They're going, hey, we need to seriously make more games for the PC. And it's working out beautifully. Like, StarCraft uh, has really pushed the PC. Uh, World of Warcraft pushed the PC. Uh, other games that pushed the PC. Uh, Skyrim helped push the PC a good deal. And there's... Let's see, what are... I'm trying to remember any other games. Like, a lot of MMOs have been pushing the PC. Um... But not just MMOs. I mean, there's a lot of various games out there that have been for the PC, and they've just expanded things. Like, Team Fortress 2 for the PC would, did great leaps and strides for it. So, I mean, this is just my opinion. Uh, please leave any comments. If you agree, disagree. If you have any uh, questions, concerns, please just leave any comments. I will try to respond to them as quickly as I can. And thank you.